Okay, this is now the five minute tarot for the 23rd of July, 2017. And I moved the monitor back so the webcam's further away so you've got a wider um, field of view. <clears throat> Don't know why I'm telling you that. Anyway, so today I want to tell you about digging a well and why it's important and how if you think about that kind of thing, you're going to be able, you're going to know more and you're going to have a better grasp of what's happening with life. And that means you're going to read cards better and you're going to be of greater use to the questioner because you're going to be able to explain things, explain better things and explain things better. Because we tend to look at the world and see things out there and controlling us or affecting us. And I'm going to talk about how there's value and there's, there's a solution if we look within and what that means and why we should and how we can make the difference between being controlled by circumstances and which can be difficult because if you're weak and small and single and on your own, it can be tough to beat the group. But if you if you look if you start with or look within and find your inner source and you can do it, um, then what's going on out there doesn't affect you the same way and it's not as strong, it's not as powerful, and it doesn't control you to the same extent. So th this kind of began for me years ago when I was living in Glasgow in Byers Road and I had noisy neighbours upstairs and it was really annoying. And so I thought, OK, I'm going to move. And so my solution was to move to a place where it would be quieter. So um, it, that that might work. Right. You can solve the problem by going somewhere else. But if it's a problem that you're meant to deal with, then you're going to take the problem with you to the new location. So it's going to keep repeating itself until you do something about it. All right. So I could I could move, but then I would have noisy neighbors there until I just until I um, dealt with the situation, the problem, whatever it was that was taking my attention to the noise outside. OK, so my teacher at the time told me um, you can leave if you want, but you're going to take the problem with you. So the solution was instead of moving, but to learn to control my reaction. So I decided to do something about it. I decided to take her advice or to follow her instructions because I'm really quite obedient. So I decided, OK, I'm going to I'm going to get to the point where outside noise doesn't bother me. And so um, I wanted to do it. And that's the thing. When you want to do something, you, all you need to do is want it. And it's already in the process of happening. And so people will come into your life or situations that will move you forward to where it is that you want to get to. If you pay attention, if you cooperate, if you obey instead of talking yourself out of it. But let me let me come back to that. So I had problems with neighbours um, and it was it's only mainly because I was kind of all, you know, annoyed about stuff. And so the neighbours, it, it didn't really matter if it was the neighbours. So anyway, what happened was maybe a couple of months after that decision, um, I found myself, I was in London, England, and I was in Waterloo Station waiting for a train to go and get somebody. I went into the waiting room and it was a cafeteria place and I got a coffee and sat down at a table right next to the jukebox that was playing loud music and I read a book. Okay, so in Byers Road, I was all worked up because the neighbours upstairs were making a noise. Here I was two months later, sitting beside a loud blaring jukebox, ignoring it. So it can be done. And how do you do it? You can pick a card to know what specifically to do. But all you need to do, I think, is want it and then recognize it's already happening. And all you need to do is cooperate with it. So there's a fellow called Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N for Norman. And he was a well-known, I think he died. He was a well-known author, success coach, guru type person and various other modern people like 
Anthony Robbins and Gary Vanderchuk and people like that who are business coaches and success coaches. They took Jim Rohn's ideas and teachings. There's a book he wrote called Some Seven Strategies for Success or something like that. So one of the points that Jim Rohn made and that other people make is you are the average of the five people you spend most time with. And that's one way of understanding your state of mind, your possibilities for the moment. So if you're if you spend most of your time with negative people, you're in some way negative as well. So the solution, according to Jim Rohn and various other people, is change the people that you're with. Right? So that instead of hanging around with people who are negative, because then you end up as well being down on yourself and thinking it's not going to work and it can't be done and life is difficult and so on. But if you switch those people for more motivated, self-starting people, then you too will become more motivated and more of a self-starter and you'll, have more, you'll experience more success. So this idea that your environment is important and if you if you change the people that you spend time with, that's going to make an it seems sensible and it's going to make an improvement because you're probably better off with people who are positive. Okay, so that's that's a, a normal, typical answer to how do you have success? <clears throat> and it's change your environment. But it, I, I heard somebody mention this a few days ago, and I thought, what if you can't do it? What if you're 21 and living with your parents, both of whom are down on you, and you're living with a brother and sister who are also miserable? You know, if, and you're really not in a position to change those people. You know, you can't leave home, or you're not able to, to leave. So what do you do? Or if you're a refugee in a in a camp in France, from if you're from Syria and you're living in a camp in France and the people that you spend time with every day, everybody knows you're not going to solve the problem. You're stuck, you're at the mercy of the forces of French society, the European Union and so on. So if, we, if we've got something that's true, we want it to be true everywhere. And I think changing your environment is okay, depending on where you are, but it's not, maybe it's step two, right? But it's not step one, because I think step one is look within. If we can, no matter where we are, if we can look within and depend on our own self, um, if we depend on our inner self, um, so with me overcoming the noise of the neighbors, um, uh, what you do is you learn if you've got problem with negative people, what you do is you figure out how to spend time in the company of negative people and not be affected by it or not be brought down by them and their negative attitudes. That seems to me to be a more permanent solution to the problem. And if you can find your inner strength, you take it with you wherever you go. So when you're dealing with negative people, you're still strong. When you're dealing with successful people, it's that much better because you're still strong. So what do you do? You decide that you want it, and then you follow your own promptings. You listen to yourself, and you pay attention to your thoughts and your ideas. So maybe you you come across a particular book or a video on YouTube, let's say, or you have this idea to try a class. It might be nice to do this particular class. So what you do is you think to yourself, I wouldn't have had the idea in the first place if I wasn't supposed to do something with it. So you explore it and you follow it for a bit and see where it leads. Sometimes you, the book that you read will be really good and inspiring. Other times you'll read the book and you think, this is rubbish. Why am I reading this? So you've learned something from a bad book and you can learn as much from a bad book as you can from a good one. So you learn something and you're one step closer to recognizing and cooperating with your own inner strength. So decide that you want it and then understand that it's already there. It's already here for you. You just have to recognize it and work with it and cooperate with it. So if you get the idea to try something new, you try something new. 
So just for a change, you say to yourself, I'm not going to talk myself out of it. Because we tend to think, you know, I'd like to do that. Oh, yes, but, or this isn't going to happen. Or people tried it, and why am I any different? And we've, always, we've got this kind of, I can't do it mentality. Um, so we, we're good at explaining to ourselves, why not? And that reminds me of the, the thing, if you say to yourself, why am I such a loser? You're going to come up with a hundred reasons why you're a loser. But if you say, how can I be a winner? You're going to come up with a hundred ideas of how you, what you can do and how you can change and how you can develop to get more of what it is that you want. So if we go back to yet a couple of days ago, a few days ago, the word man, mankind, M-A-N, M is the death card, A is the magician, and N is temperance. So if we go back to the A in the, in the word man, it's the magician, and the origin of that word means to have power and to be able. So when we think to ourselves, okay, I want this, and I can have it, and I'm going to cooperate with myself to get it, that's being able. So in some way, you align yourself with the magician card. So this whole idea of looking within, and this is what this today's thing is called. It's like digging a well. So what you do is you look within yourself and you discover the inner source of life energy, whatever that might mean, however it appears to you. So maybe you'll find inspiration in music or an idea or something, maybe you find it in the tarot. But whatever it is, you're going to find a source and you're going to be able to draw on this source, inner strength, whatever it happens to be, whenever and wherever you want it. And it's not going to let you down. People can let you down. People can promise and be unable to deliver. People can promise, but they never really meant it in the first place. But with you and your inner self, it's never going to let you down and it's not going to dry up because what you're doing is you're contacting life and it's infinite. And there's more than enough life spirit or life energy to go around. And maybe from time to time you remind yourself of springtime, right? So in spring, you look outside and there's this explosion of growth. And that, I think, means, I've said this before, that the only thing inevitable is life and not death, because life just will find a way. You get the example of a, like there's a rock face and there's a tiny crevice and some earth got in there and there's a flower growing. Because, you know, if you look at a concrete road or tarmac road and you've got cracks and you've got plants growing through it, life is going to find a way. So the, the only thing that's inevitable is life and not death. And the death card is a letter M, which is the first letter in the word man. So death is really infinite life. And the magician following M-A, the magician is being able. And temperance, the temperance card, the N at the end of the letter man, is getting death or life and being able to work together into some expression of something bigger, better, something greater, whatever that might mean. Um, but your expression of this life is going to be different from mine and different from your neighbours. But it doesn't mean that we're right and you're wrong. It just means we've got individual unique expressions of the same basic life energy. So I suppose I'm saying um, uh, go out and change the world. But change your inner reaction, and that will automatically change the world. Okay, so tomorrow will probably be something more obviously tarot related. Um, I've got a couple of videos, Chad and Phil, to look at, and some other things, so it's probably going to be like normal service will be resumed tomorrow. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye.